we're working on a research protocol that's looking at the effect of hearing loss on soldiers' performance kind of on a battlefield scenario. Um, what we're doing is uh, my uh, partners in the research have developed a hearing loss simulator. So the soldiers mount that on the top of their helmet and it superimposes hearing loss through earphones that are inserted into the ear. With that, then we can look at how well they're performing out on a scenario battlefield where they have a start point, some waypoints that they need to obtain, and then an end point. During that time, there's other teams on the battlefield and they have to try and uh, engage the other team if they come across them. But the objective is to get from the start to the finish in the least amount of time and be the first team to arrive. And this is difficult when we superimpose hearing loss onto the soldiers. So we're looking at how well they can shoot, move, and communicate with this hearing loss built in. I've got a GoPro uh, camera here that we're affixing to the base plate of the soldier's helmet to give the point of view of the soldier from his vision. And I'm hooking up uh, some binaural microphones here to either side of the helmet. And this allows us to capture the audio uh, just the same way that he would hear it out in the field. So when you go back and play it, listening over headphones, uh, you can basically kind of immerse yourself into the same environment that the soldier is in, uh, both in terms of the vision and in terms of the hearing. See how the lights are coming on? It'll come back on here in a second. You can see it's flashing, and then we can set it to different um, hearing losses. It's essentially when I'm dialing in, and then the chain, it changes color depending on the hearing loss. We have four teams in play, orange, yellow, purple and green and right now they're at their start points. What will happen is as soon as we hit go, the teams are instructed to hit three different waypoints in the field of play and then get to an end point. And the objective is to get their waypoints and get to their end points as quickly as they can and to stay alive. Their instructions their instructions are to fire on contact when they run into other teams because they will be crossing into the field of play. Ready to go. Round one will begin in five, four, three, two, one, begin. We started really at a proof of concept um, working with the West Point cadets. Uh, on a paintball-based uh, scenario where we were using the same hearing loss simulators, and, but we were doing more of kind of a, a woods ball, every man for himself type of uh, scenario where we were really isolating just the, the com basically taking the communication component out of it and really focusing just on um, being able to detect and identify and localize the sounds of the enemy. So being able to localize gunfire and, and detect you know, footsteps at, at a distance. When I couldn't hear very well, I feel a lot more cautious and I feel like I, I need to be more vocal to my soldiers, my left and my right side. I don't know if they can hear me as well or not. And uh, it, it affected our, our movement. You can take a very junior soldier that maybe doesn't have a lot of experience and he or she may not perform as well as a soldier that has a lot of years of experience and that experience is something that you know, we, we factor in a little bit in that testing that I talked about earlier. That's the lab-derived testing, but it's not real world. The, you know, the, the sound that they hear, the background noise, isn't combat noise. This is a step in the process to so make it more um, real world for the commanders on the ground. So when their soldiers are given a profile, they completely understand what that profile means and maybe what the limitations are for that soldier. As you can see now, we, we have a pretty sophisticated way of collecting data. We basically just, through word of mouth and, and a little bit of research, we found this, this hit system here um, stationed at Fort Campbell. There's a few of them, you know, stationed around at different uh, Army installations. And we recognized that this would be a, you know, a perfect platform for us to kind of move to the next step of what we wanted to do. Also, we have the 101st Airborne here at Fort Campbell, so it's a, a good unit to work with that, that you know, is experienced with um, with this type of combat. And so the HIT system provides an opportunity for us to kind of automatically monitor what's happening. They've got the Miles gear, um, and we can use their real weapons, because we had some limitations in using paintball. They're, you know, they're much quieter, they don't sound the same, so that's gonna affect our results. 
in this case, they can use their actual weapons. It's firing blanks with BFAs, so it's a little quieter than what you would get in you know, actual combat. But, um, but in terms of the, the accuracy, it's, it's worked. We know who's shooting who and when it's happening very precisely. And we also have a way of very easily tracking their movement. Uh, in, the, in our earlier studies, we saw um, a change in strategy as a function of hearing loss, especially in the woods ball every man for himself scenario. What you would find is soldiers in the, in the more difficult hearing loss profiles tended to kind of camp out or hide uh, in, in order to maintain their survivability, but what we saw was a very significant drop off in their, their ability to engage the enemy. So their lethality dropped off to half of what it was when you were in the normal hearing setting. There's a lot of, uh, of things that surprised me on this training like especially on setting number four, which is pretty much complete hearing loss. I'm having a hard time just being able to direct where we're going or what I wanted them to do to be able to continue mission. We're far enough into it now that I can, I can already pretty safely say that we've, we're seeing some, some trends that will hold up. I mean, we are, we're definitely seeing that the, the normal hearing team is winning close to 40% of the, the rounds when there's four teams you know, around. Chance, it would be 25%. Uh, and the, basically the severe hearing loss profile that we're testing, they're winning less than 15% of the time. So we're definitely seeing a significant difference there. And then the, the mild and moderate losses that we're testing are somewhere in between there, uh, closer to 25, 30%. Hearing loss affects the soldiers out there because being able to move towards the, the objective, it's, it's hard if you can't communicate correctly. You have to constantly look into your left and your right just to be able to communicate with your team leader and your soldiers, and it's, it's, it's tough. The end result is we were still able to use our hand and arm signals, and somehow we got it done. You gotta work with what you have and continue mission. Well, we're hoping that we'll be able to come up with a standard for hearing profile that's a little more uh, real world and realistic. Um, right now, when we profile soldiers and they get to an H3 hearing profile, it requires a medical board. And some of those soldiers are then released from service because of the amount of hearing loss that they have. But none of that really is looking at how well a soldier is localizing and functioning in an infantry type environment, detecting sound um, in, a, in a woods type environment. So this is kind of looking at more real world experiences for the soldiers. Mm -hmm.